Appraisers, in this video we're going to be going over one portion of the settings uh, that are available in Spark. Now we have two types of settings in Spark. We have the general settings, which we're going over in this video, and we also have the grid-specific settings, which are these over here on the left that are in blue. Now, this video is going over the general settings, and to get to general settings, you have two ways you can do that. Click on the gear icon, and then click on general settings, or you can also right-click anywhere on the screen, and choose general settings. Okay, so this is the general settings screen. We're gonna walk through this step by step with you just to give you an idea of what all you can do here. So you can see the first one up here is default picture size. So simply click on this and choose what size photos you typically use for your comps and subject in your report. Uh, all the mode, for example, gives you three options, small, medium, and large. Just choose whatever you normally put into your report. And Spark will, if necessary, add the correct photo addenda to your report when adding comps into your grid. Uh, okay, and next one is reorder comps at initial file upload. So basically what this means is when you first upload your comps to Spark, it will order them for you. So you can choose to either turn off the ordering and just leave them in whatever order your MLS sent them over in, or you can order them by listing status, which of course is gonna go closed, then pending, then active. By the way, all of this, you can see when I hover over here, on the right in yellow, it tells you exactly what all these mean. Uh, but uh, So the next one is listing status, then date, which means, of course, it's going to order them by listing status. And then within the listing status, it's going to order by date. So closed by closed date, pending by pending date, and listings by list date. Uh, then you can also order by listing status, then distance to the subject. Or you can just forget about listing status altogether and just order all the comps by their proximity to the subject. And that's it. Okay, the next one, actually the next two, we have abbreviation for unknown. So this will affect what goes into your grid when Spark doesn't know what to put in your grid. So essentially when the agent forgot to enter in information into the listing or they entered in something that Spark doesn't understand, uh, like uh, for example for a style, uh, some MLSs allow the agent just to enter in any style they want to. So if they enter in some style that Spark doesn't know how to translate, then it'll put in a question mark here. Um, you can change that to whatever you want. Most appraisers either use a question mark or a capital UNK like that. You just want to enter in something that's going to stick out to you when you're going through and verifying the information in the grid once it's in your report. Now here we have the non-UAD separator. So in fields uh, that are not UAD guided, uh, then you can decide what Spark uses as a separator. For example, on the heating and cooling line. Let's say you have forced air and central air uh, for your heating and cooling. How do you want to separate them? Most appraisers either use a semicolon or the forward slash. And then next we have these next five, which are more to kind of speed up your workflow. So if you always work in the same MLS and always work in the same state, you just fill those out here. That way when you start up Spark, you don't have to answer those questions every time. Same thing with your form type and form. If you typically always do UAD and 1004 forms and just put that in here as your default and you don't have to answer those questions every time. Commonly what appraisers do is they'll fill in these first three. Same thing here with county. If you always or almost always work in the same county, just type in the county. And then when you're uh, typing in your information, then you don't have to enter that in as well. Okay, so going on down here. Now, Spark, when we get information from public records regarding a transaction, we get both the recorded date and the sale date. In some areas, you want to use your recorded date as your closed date in your grid. But in other areas, you want to use the sale date. For example, I know you appraisers in uh, the Chicagoland area, for example, you want to use sale date, not recording date. Uh, but a lot of other places, you use recording date, so you just put that in. Now, if you are selecting recording date here, you will have this option come up, which is to use the sale date as your contract date. Now, in most areas, this does not apply. You don't want to do this, but in some areas, you do. So you just simply turn this on if you want to use the recording date as the close date and the public records date, I'm sorry, the sale date as the contract date. Uh, okay, moving on down. You also have the option of overriding the sale date uh, from CoreLogic with your MLS sale date. We did have a couple appraisers request that option. So if you want to do that, just put change that to a yes. Now this right here, these will change the way the addenda go into your report. So REO addenda type, you either have the standard REO or the quantitative. And for rental form type, you have the minor or the major. Now by default, it's going to be on minor. And you can easily change that to major. So for example, if you're doing 
uh, 1007, a rent schedule and an operating income statement, but you're not putting it into a 1004. It's just all s separate and all by itself. Then you want to use the major form. So you just click major. And then when you're all done, by the way, with any of these settings, you just hit save changes and take me back and you'll get back to the grid. Uh, next, we have the include work file property report. Now, this is going to, by default, be turned on, and it's going to be turned on with maps included. This is the property report that Spark creates, and it will automatically load it into your digital work file, into your report. And you can either choose to have it with maps, without maps, or just completely turn it off. And regarding that property report, you can choose to have it in legal or letter size. And then this last option, this is just for those of you who do not have an active Ala Mode subscription. If you don't, then you want to change this to yes, and that will load the census tract information into the report. If you do have the Ala Mode subscription, just leave it as no, because Ala Mode is going to automatically fill that in for you anyways. Okay, that's it. Th that's all there is to the general settings. Thanks for watching.